Hey, have you ever seen the Simpsons episode where they predict Germany winning the Soccer World Cup in 2014? Wait, do you guys even know of the Simpsons in Germany? Yeah, I mean, the Simpsons have been on German TV for decades. Oh, okay, I was just confused because you didn't react to my Seinfeld reference earlier. What do you mean? You know, no soup for you. Oh, yeah, well, that's because I'd never even heard of Seinfeld before I came to the US and I haven't seen a single episode to this day. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, or Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. So it's been around five years, and it often happens that my friends here in the US forget that I didn't grow up in the same country as they did, and say things like, oh, it's that actor. He was on Zoe 101 back in the day, remember? And I'll be like, no? Or they hear a theme song and look at me with big eyes, thinking that it's giving me just as big of a throwback moment as them, but in most cases it's like, I've never heard that song before in my life. But then again, with some other shows and songs, I'll be like, Oh, that's the song from Disney's Große Pause. What's that show called in English? Now, I've mentioned this many times before, we do consume a lot of American music, movies, and TV shows in Germany, but it's not like our TV programs are exactly the same as in the US. We have a huge variety of German TV productions, but in between, you'll see American shows as well. They're always dubbed for the German audience, though. Germany is actually one of the biggest dubbing markets in the world. We really dub everything. They also often get a new title and sometimes even the intro song gets translated into German and re-recorded for the German market. Which American shows you'll find on German TV has to do with which ones the German channels buy the rights for. From what I understand, that decision is usually based on the availability and the price, but also on how fitting they think the show is for the German market. Not everything that works in the US works in Germany as well. But then again, some things do work, and that's why today I want to let you in on the secret of which American TV show shows are relevant in Germany as well, so if you speak to a German, you can rest assured that they're familiar with these shows. By the way, watching TV is also a great way to learn and practice a second language. When people ask me for tips of how to learn or practice German, I often say watching movies or shows in German is very helpful. I learned a lot by watching How I Met Your Mother or Gossip Girl in English as a teenager, and the people from LingoPie, who sponsored this video, agree with that, and that's why they've started a new video on demand platform especially for that purpose. You can learn new languages while watching TV. They have local content from around the world, and if, let's say, you wanted to learn German, you could watch this comedy series, for example, called Paare, Couples, that features some of the biggest German actors and actresses. And the best thing is that while watching, you'll have all the language learning tools you need right there in the player. I can turn on the German subtitles to see everything they say written out, and whenever I don't know a word or want to hear it again, I can click on it, see the translation, and hear it out loud. Das Geld. These words also get added to your flashcard list so that you can review them afterwards. Alternatively, you can turn on the English subtitles, both at the same time, or you can use this mashup feature so that only the most important words get highlighted for you. And since native speakers tend to speak pretty fast, especially in a comedy, you can adjust the talking speed, depending on your level. Wir beide sind verschieden. Wir wollen nicht immer das Gleiche, das ist aber ganz normal, das geht allen Paaren so, ist doch so. Ist doch, wie wir besprochen haben. Schatz, musst du mir mehr Freiheit lassen? And if you'd like to see the whole script while watching, you can just click here and get a good overview of what's been said, and you can even jump back to these sentences. Ich kann nicht glauben, dass du das gerade gesagt hast. If there is a sentence you had trouble understanding, you can listen to it on repeat with the loop function, and you can even record yourself saying it. And afterwards, just look at all the words that were added to your word list and practice them with the built-in flashcards. LingoPie really has everything a language learner can dream of, and the best thing is you can get a 65% discount on the annual subscription if you click on the link in the info box below. 65% off on learning a new language while watching amazing shows, and there's even a 7-day free trial. They currently offer German, French, Spanish, Russian, Portuguese, and Italian, but they'll be launching new languages every year. 
Okay, so let's put the TV shows in categories and start with kids shows. Thinking about those just makes me so nostalgic. Let's see if it makes you nostalgic too. But also a little disclaimer, of course, different generations grew up with different shows in their childhood. I picked the ones that came to my mind thinking about my childhood in the 90s and early 2000s. I'm 27, but please feel free to share your childhood shows in the comments below. We do have amazing German kids shows, in my opinion, that I think should be shown in the US as well, like Biene Maya, Nils Holgersson, Heidi, Die Sendung mit der Maus, and many more. Those are just classics, and I think those were all shown on the channel Kika, the kids' channel by the public broadcasting in Germany. The public broadcasting is publicly funded, follows certain regulations, and doesn't show any ads. The other important kids' channel on German free TV, and I personally never had any pay TV channels growing up, was Super RTL, a private channel, and that's where most of the American shows were on. Such as Disney's Große Pause that I just mentioned. In English, it has a much shorter title, Recess, but that's one that I think every 90s kid in Germany knows and loves. Other shows on Super RTL that I remember from the afternoon or evening program were and I'm gonna try and pronounce these the German way, Cat Dog, that weird show with the creature that's half dog and half cat, Doug, Hey Arnold, Angela Anaconda, I was trying to like say it in German, Peppa Ann, Fillmore, DuckTales, Chip and Chap, Typisch Andy, Disney's Wochenend Kids, and the Gummibärenbande, among others. As I said, sometimes shows get a German title for the German market. Typisch Andy is What's Up Andy in the original. Die Wochenend Kids are called The Weekenders in English, and Die Gummibärenbande are Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears, which apparently wasn't as big of a show for 90s kids in the US as it was in Germany. And sometimes they get an additional German subtitle to kind of explain to the German audience what it's about. So DuckTales was called DuckTales Neues aus Entenhausen, so news from Duckburg, with a German version of the theme song too. Sie sind geheimvoll. classics that I'm not quite sure if they had a regular spot in the TV program when I was young, but that I've definitely seen here and there are Popeye, Looney Tunes, aka Bugs Bunny, Pink Panther, Der Rosa Rote Panther in German, and The Muppets. I know that my parents definitely grew up with The Muppet Show in Germany. On the other channel, Kika, I know that they showed American shows like Bear in the Big Blue House, Der Bär im Großen Blauen Haus, which was one of my absolute favorites as a kid. They also showed the teen mega hit Lizzie McGuire with Hilary Duff, and the Sesame Street, Sesamstraße in German. Sesame Street is an interesting one because I thought it was a German show for the longest time and that's because they actually started shooting the frame story separately for the German market pretty soon after it first started. So there are real people in the German version who speak German without being dubbed. And the German Sesamstraße also has a really iconic theme song that literally everyone in Germany knows. You can't even really translate it into English because it would only say the, 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 who, how, what, why, 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 those who don't ask stay dumb. In German, we have different articles, der, die, das, that's all just the in English, and we also have different words for saying why. In general, as a kid growing up in Germany, I was really used to seeing dubbed shows and movies, and honestly hardly noticed it or thought about why it was dubbed, and especially with cartoons, I often couldn't tell the difference between a German cartoon and a non-German one at all. Except for the characters' names, maybe, whether they were English pronounced or German, but I didn't think much about that either, to be honest. If anything, I think I just found the English names a little bit cooler than the German ones. Now, besides the free TV channels, some people in Germany also received the German Disney Channel, which you had to pay for up until 2014. Kids who had the Disney Channel were always considered very lucky by their friends back then, and Nickelodeon Germany was a thing too on and off, but those were not really the channels that everyone grew up with. In the early 90s, the public broadcasting channel ARD also had a show called Disney Club for a few years, so people who grew up during that time would have been able to see more Disney shows probably. 
The next category are shows that work both for kids and for adults. And the first one there is The Simpsons that has been extremely successful in Germany for decades. We also have SpongeBob SquarePants in Germany called SpongeBob Schwammkopf, so SpongeBob Spongehead. And you can also find South Park. When I was young, that was always on MTV and Family Guy. One of my all-time favorite shows from the 90s are the Dinos, dinosaurs in English, with the highlight being the baby that kept hitting the dead with a pot saying, nicht die Mama, not the Mama. And the series and movies about the dog Lassie were a big hit in Germany as well. We'd pronounce her Lassie. Now let's move on to sitcoms. The first one on my list is Bezaubernde Genie from the 60s. I dream of Genie in English. That was one of the shows that my mom grew up with and was a huge fan of when she was young and still is, I think. The sitcom about the alien Alf, Alf in German, was a cult show in the 80s and 90s as well. I remember seeing that as a kid and really liking it. Other sitcoms that definitely have a place in the German's hearts are Full House, I loved it and still love that show a lot. Der Prinz von Bel Air, Fresh Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. Eine schrecklich nette Familie, which has a completely different title in English. Married with children is what it's called. And I personally also loved Sabrina the Teenage Witch growing up. Sabrina total verhext. Other big sitcoms like Seinfeld that were huge in the US never really became a big thing in Germany. They only showed it on a rather small channel there. and. Even Friends didn't really become successful in Germany until years into the show. Since the mid-2000s, some more recent sitcoms have become regulars on Germany's screens because the private channel Pro7 would show numerous episodes in a row before they showed the next sitcom. This is how Scrubs became extremely successful in Germany. Scrubs, Die Anfänger is the title in Germany, one of my all-time favorite shows, as well as Malcolm Mittendrin, Malcolm in the Middle, How I Met Your Mother, also one of my favorite shows, or The Big Bang Theory. Other extremely successful comedy shows like The Office or Parks and Recreation were never big in Germany at all. We do, however, have a German version of The Office called Stromberg with Christoph Maria Herbst that was very successful. Next up, let's talk about drama TV shows. Not sure if that's a genre, but I'm just gonna call it that for now. And by the way, in this whole video, I'm really just focusing on TV series in the classic sense, and I'm not talking about shows that became big on streaming platforms. Number one in this category is Baywatch with David Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson, who joined in season three. That show was not only a huge milestone in American TV history, but also in Germany. They gave it a subtitle, so it was called Baywatch, die Rettungsschwimmer von Malibu, and it was shown on the public broadcasting channel ARD at the time. Other big TV shows that come to mind are, and I'm trying to say this the German way, Beverly Hills 90210, The OC that was called OC California in Germany, One Tree Hill, Gilmore Girls, Charmed, Zauberhafte Hexen, Gossip Girl, and Vampire Diaries. Another show that comes to mind is Prison Break, which even had a dedicated pop song by a German singer and a German rapper that was in the charts at the time. Most of these shows that I just mentioned in this category aren't necessarily shows that everyone in Germany has seen, probably mostly the target audience of teenage girls, I would assume, but the titles will definitely ring a bell. And last but not least, let's get to the German's all-time favorite genre, crime. Crime has a special status in Germany. We have many classic German crime formats, such as Tatort, but American crime shows are very successful as well. Like Magnum back in the day. Magnum P.I. in the original, in German, it's just Magnum, or Magnum if you pronounce it the German way. Or the X-Files, called Akte X, die unheimlichen Fälle des FBI in German. In addition to that, German TV channels showed countless other crime shows like Criminal Minds, the different CSI shows, Navy CIS, Bones, Die Knochenjägerin, The Mentalist, Monk, Law and Order, and many more. And one that is more mystical than crime is X Factor Das Unfassbare, in the original Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction, that I think every German knows with Jonathan Frakes. They actually just did a reboot of the show a few weeks ago. 
Now, of course, there are many, many TV shows that I haven't mentioned. I think that would be pretty much impossible to provide a complete list. And I haven't even touched on certain genres, like reality shows, for example. So please feel free to add things in the comments below. I do hope, though, that this gives you a pretty good idea of the American TV shows that Germans are familiar with and even grew up with. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and activate the bell. And if you want to see more content outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook and support me through the super thanks button down below or on Patreon and buymeacoffee.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!